We are down to the final event here at the 2024 Arnold Strongman Classic. Three stones that stand between one man and a championship. Thanks so much for joining us, everybody, here inside the Columbus Convention Center in Columbus, Ohio. I'm Sean Woodland with Dr. Bill Crawford, Rob Kearney joining us now, and Jerry Pritchett. And Rob, uh, this has been an exciting competition so far. You're coming into an event like this. Where does an athlete's head need to be in order to be successful at this challenge? I think it needs to find, you need to find that same balance of excitement, but technique and um, you know, how you're gonna execute this event. These three stones are awkward. Uh, they aren't easily moved, right? We have a press, we have a load, and then a stone to shoulder. Not many guys have experience on that final stone. So you need to have really great excitement, but also need to stay calm enough to execute really well on these three stones. Let's take a look at the overall standings as it is now Mitchell Hooper, courtesy of three straight event wins, who sits atop the overall standings with 42 points. Hathor Bjornsson is four back. Those two are more or less pretty much assured a spot on the podium. But look at the battle going on behind them. Tom Stolman and Mateusz Kieloszkowski are tied with 29 and a half points. Bobby Thompson and Evan Singleton can still factor in here depending on what happens in this next event. And the next event is the Stones of Strength. And as you heard Rob say, there are three different stones. The first one needs to be pressed. The second stone that increases in weight up to 365 pounds, that needs to go over the bar. And then in the remaining time, how many times can you get that final 410 pound stone to your shoulder? We certainly saw some exciting uh, moments with the women, courtesy of Angelica Jardine, and expecting to see the same thing here for the men. The keys to being successful here. Well, the same thing, you want to get those first two stones and the, you know, you want to press that stone as efficiently as possible. You want to get the stone over the bar and move on to where the grind's going to start and getting that stone to, the, to, your, to your shoulder because that's where your energy's going to go. So you want to get, as, get through those first two as quickly as possible and, and be as efficient as possible so that you can save your energy to get, get on the shoulder. But I have to say, these are beautiful stones. And it, the other thing about this is I love the fact the stone lifting means this much. Natural stone lifting actually <laughs> yeah. comes down to deciding championships and has a true place in our sport. And we talk about that battle for third place. You have two arguably the best stone lifters in the sport. Tom Stoltman, a multi-world record holder with the Atlas Stones. And Mateo, she's really just great on those natural stones. So watch that battle for third is going to be really exciting. Oscar Zukowski is going to lead things off here. He's making his first appearance here at the Arnold Strongman Classic. He was last year's amateur champion. Come on, Oscar. That stone is 300 pounds, 136 kilos, and Oscar struggling to get that overhead. Yeah, he needs to just look back a little bit and push back. Finding that balance point with these natural stone on these presses is really difficult too. Trying to get that sweet spot to get those elbows locked out, get that head through. Uh, as well as, if you don't feel real confident on your grip on that, it, it's hard to push those elbows through. I do like how strict the judges are being though, making sure that those elbows are locked out, making sure that stone is under control overhead. Puts the athletes in a tough spot. But it's, you're being fair. Absolutely. You want to be fair to everyone. So that's what that means. You want to be fair to everyone. Oscar's going to call that. Oscar Zukowski getting some valuable experience here at the Arnold Strongman Classic as he leaves the floor. Tom Evans is going to be up next. That's Tom Evans with Drew, so Novikov will be the next man. Yeah, Tom has that bicep from yesterday on the frame. And, you know, Novikov, Alexi has seen these stones. Alexi has experienced, and I've, what if, oh, I just want him to come out here and throw those gears on this and give yeah. us a good performance. Finish up really strong. Yeah, you know, we haven't seen these, um, these natural rounded stones in a couple of years. Alexi was here the last time they were on the competition floor, so he has that experience on them. And then he was also here a few years ago when we had this tombstone to shoulder for an event as well. Um, 
So even though he's sitting a little bit down on the leaderboard, he can still mix things up by putting on a good show here and getting some good points, put some pressure on some guys that are ahead of him to put out a really great performance. Right. Well, he had to get, uh, he had to have one more rep a couple of years ago to put himself on the podium. And I mean, just with the very last split second and just, just gutted it out. That was an amazing performance. One more look at the keys and it starts with that speed in the beginning. And as you said, Dr. Bill, you've got to get through those first two as quickly as you can because this event really doesn't start until you get to that, that third stone. Right. Yeah, you get that, you know, you get to that third stone and then it's a grind. You do, but when you get to that, you can't get too worked up and get yourself out of air when you get to this. Right. That thing's going to take everything you have to get that shoulder. And if you already get there a little winded, it's going to be tough to get that to yeah. shoulder. It's also the first time that we've, uh, you know, actually seen this stone to shoulder you know, seeing the tombstone as a third stone in a series, yeah. right? Normally you get the fresh crack at us. You're actually expending energy. It's hard enough to And then fresh. go to it. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah, the, the uh, previous stone trials were a couple of stone presses, a couple of loads, and then the carry. Yeah. When, uh, Rob, when you launched yourself. <laughs> into the pad. You launched yourself into the pad. Fashion. Still <laughs> holding on to the stone. I was like, the bat. Is a performance. That was a nice way to make a, uh, an entrance onto the Arnold floor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you made a lot, a lot of fans. Well, Alexei Novikov up next. And Novikov has yet to finish better than sixth in an event. 17 points overall coming in. Like how he took his time getting his hands really under that stone, making sure yeah. he had a good grip, not. Yep. Not wasting energy on that pick. I said, you don't want to waste any fumbles on a pick or a press or anything. I think sometimes with, with, uh, stone, with stone pressing, they'll allow, if you get your head through, if it's not completely locked out, because a complete lockout sometimes is a little bit. Uh, it's, it's a dangerous lift, you know, because it's right. not like you're holding on to a, a barbell or a log or something that you have control of. You know, this, this gets away from you, it's bad. It won't spit you out, it'll just drop straight down. Yeah. And now to the 365 pound, 165 kilo stones, gotta go over that post. And Novikov's gonna call out his pat his oh. right arm. Yeah, on, on the Denny's earlier, he kind of grabbed that form, maybe strained it. Yep. I think the frame, he also was kind of touching that side. You're not picking any heavy stones with any kind of form, bicep strains, anything like that, it's too much of a load. Alexi was able to get through that first stone. He gets one good rep. And again, that crew's got their uh, got their kilts on in homage to David Webster, who was always here in his kilt. I did stage announcing and came in my kilt the second day once, and that's just uh, because David was there. So this was no problem for Novikov. It's a good clean to quickly roll it and catch it. And just didn't have the Structural integrity in the arm to handle this one. Well, yeah, you know, grabbing these without tacky as well, you know, you get a pinch on them much harder, that harder squeeze, and you get away with a little less on tacky, you know. Martins Leetzies will be the next man out. Martins coming in in seventh place overall with 23 points. And we've seen him come up with some pretty big performances on Stone, so if he could put up a, a huge performance here, he has a chance of. Depending on what happens, he would need a lot of help, but could get himself inside the top five. He's definitely one that has an affinity towards these natural stones. Mm -hmm. You know, we yeah. saw a couple of years ago when he was here, he put out a great performance on that stone to shoulder um, with, with that final stone we see here in the medley. So Martins is never one to lay down easily. You know, I think he's coming into this event with a lot of confidence and kind of hoping some things happen above him on that leaderboard that he wasn't, you know, kind of in control of. But with an event like this, he definitely has to feel pretty good knowing he's got a lot of reps and a lot of experience on these three stones to try to come out here and put up a big number into that third stone. With the order of competitors on your screen, we're already through Oscar and Alexi as both Tom Evans and Maxime Boudreau have withdrawn. Martin Leitzis is up next. Now, Evan Singleton, we're hearing now, is also withdrawn. Oh, okay. So Martins. leave a lot of points out there for Martins. That's yeah. absolutely right, and yeah. Martins, he just didn't have the start he wanted. It goes back to the deadlift where he made his his first attempt and struggled after that. 
Uh, this is his effort in the in the stones earlier. A surprising result here from Martinez. He's typically a guy that has great grip, um, typically does very well on these awkward style carries. So that right. was surprising for us to see. Yeah, I was uh, I was really expecting to see at least a top three from Martinez. Absolutely. That, you know, and, and same thing with the axle. You know, usually Martinez overhead. He's he's got great great pop and snap. You know, to, to launch that bar and pop under it. And just like, he was really kind of struggling with it. I think also, you know, that time away, um, you know, your ligaments and tendons, not just your nervous system and your muscles, but your ligaments and tendons, you know, the, the strains that you feel and, the, and you know, how, how you adapt to each of the events as you train through them, uh, that, that means a lot because yeah. that's, that's, the, that's, the that's the last thing that comes back. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I think you can see that with, with Hoptor with the axle, how well everything else has come back, but that overhead still, that... It, once that overhead takes a you know a hit for whatever reason you know whether you laid off or injury or whatever, it's hard to get back. It you is. Know? Typically, we can build up that squat that strength in the squat. We can build up that deadlift strength yep. again. Those carrying movements typically come back pretty well as um, pretty quickly as well. But like Jerry alluded to, that that overhead is always that last component, that last key that comes together once you've taken some time off. Yeah. Why is that? It's just um, it's it's a difficult muscle group to engage, it's a difficult muscle group to train and and condition for these kind of implements and these kinds of weights. The shoulders typically just take a beating when it comes to strongman training, um, so they're the last ones that kind of want to come back to the party once you've taken some time off. Yeah. But one more look at the muscles. overall standings coming in here is you know, Mitchell Hooper, your overall leader, four points up on on half Thor. Stoltman and Kieliszkowski are tied with 29 and a half points. Now Evan Singleton, he's back in six. He's withdrawn. As have Tom Evans and Maxime Boudreau. Just goes to show really how heavy and how difficult this competition is. I mean, that's one thing that Jan and Terry Todd have always kind of hung their hat on since they started this competition back in 2002. They wanted to find the strongest man there is. And, you know, it's it, you always hate to see athletes go out because of injury or be, because of whatever the reason they withdraw. But it just goes to show, really, what it takes to go through an Arnold Strongman Classic. Yeah. Now, the time you roll in this fifth event, you're beat to hell. <laughs> you know? It... And here comes Martins Leeds. Come on, Martins. Show us something. You got it. Like Rob said, Martins is very familiar with all these stones. He's dominate all these stones before. I mean, seen with the Invitational launching them over the bar. And this is his first competition since the Rogue Invitational in 2022. Getting this press is big for him. I don't think the other two implements are going to be difficult, but he has to get this press. Come on. Go, Martins. Come on. Third attempt for Martins is not going to go, and now he's got to start over. It's very uncharacteristic. It's uncharacteristic to see Martins, um, you know, look this uncomfortable on the yeah. competition floor. Yeah, to see him out there struggling this much is not something we've seen much out of Martins. Come on, get this overhead. Just, just make I it don't happen. Think it's going to happen for Martins. Or he's no kidding. Wow, he's got 90 seconds left. It's a matter of can he just get one rep? Because he is more than halfway through taking a look at that left arm. Come on, Martins. Let's go. Come on. Taking that time, 60 seconds left. Love the crowd still getting behind him, though. Yeah. Uh, he's always a crowd favorite. They love Martins. I want to see this rep. Oh. Oh. It's not there. Just not there, yeah. Oh, the Schwarzenegger in the crowd now.
I mean, this is just a, it's, it's got to be a, a terrible feeling when you know, like, it's just not there. It's just, and, and you've got 30 no, seconds left. It's a huge defeating feeling. Especially after taking some time off, wanting this to be his returning show to competition, wanting him to really put on a good performance, and yeah. just not able to kind of come through. Yeah, he's going to be very disappointed uh, with this. Martins, Martins leads his, gave it all he had. Wow. Really surprised by that. Taking some time to thank the crowd before he he exits the floor for the final time here. That's right. At the Arnold Strawman Classic in 2024. But that was surprising. It just shows it's such a battle. It's like a survival. Survival competition as much as anything. Well, after the way he got it to his chest on that, on that first attempt, I mean, I think a lot of people thought that this was just a foregone conclusion, but he right. really struggled here. I think like Correct. we were just talking about the pressing, you, know, you can see with the axle earlier, he's, his pressing just not back to what it what it was, you know. I think you also just see what it takes, what this competition takes out of you over the course of the weekend. Right. You know, yep. I mean, it is really just going through these five events. They are so heavy. They are so physically demanding just on the entire body system. You know, we talked a little bit yesterday about that central nervous system fatigue mm -hmm. and just being able to recover from that. And when you've taken time away from competition for a good amount of time like Martins did, it's hard to retrain that. It's hard to get back to that level so quickly. How long after a show like this does it take you to get back to a point where you're like, okay, now I can attack training with the with the energy that I need? Depends on what shows you have yeah. coming up next. <laughs> <laughs> Your neurologic system is just so fried from just putting everything all out on the, you know in every event. Yeah, and a lot of these guys have a really quick turnover. They're going over to the Arnold UK in two weeks, uh, and then shortly after that, we have World's Strongest Man the first week of May. So. The strongman calendar is one that is extremely difficult to, to stay on top of um, when you take into consideration all the big shows, the qualifying shows, um, and everything we have to go through throughout the year. So right. in an ideal world, Sean, to answer your question, it would be anywhere from two to three weeks of kind yeah. of recuperation, recovery time. But a lot of the times, we're lucky if we get four or five days before yeah. we have to get back into training, get back into the gym, and start our training session for the next competition. Yeah. Wow. That's the way, you know, it, it's really always been with, you know, the Arnold Columbus. You know, you come into the biggest, heaviest show, and then, you know, years ago when we had the circuit, two weeks later you were in Australia, mm -hmm. a month later you were in Brazil, a month after that you were in South Africa, you were Canada in the summer, and then Spain in September, you know, you were just one after another. Well, they do have the U.K. in a couple of weeks, so we'll see how that works. Yep. And several of these athletes are going. Yeah, I mean, most of most of the competitors from this weekend are also over there. So, like I said, quick turnaround, tough spot to be, especially after being beat up after this competition. Well, here's Bobby Thompson, fifth place overall with 25 points. He's four and a half back of Kieliszkowski and Stoltman for that final spot on the podium. We talk about a guy that can also make some noise here. You know, I mean, we've we've been proven wrong the last couple times we've said that, but. He's a great overhead presser. Yes. He's one that's done all of these stones before. And when we had this final stone to the shoulder for reps just a couple of years ago, he was successful in getting it up to the shoulder. I would think this press is going to be pretty easy for him. No hip drive, just lock it out. Yep. Oh, oh. a little balance issue. Come on, finish it now. Finish it. Oh, Bobby, let's go. No kidding. Wow. Looks like that first rep, I think his beard might have gotten stuck in his hand when he was holding <laughs> it onto the stone. I couldn't tell what happened. Something kind of yeah. jolted there. I couldn't tell what. That left arm looked a little funky. Well, just like we saw with Martins, Thompson made multiple attempts on the press, but not able to get that thing overhead. Grand scheme of things, great for Oleski in this, in this situation. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and you're leaving a lot of points for Tom oh. and Oteas to go after. Absolutely. Thompson is almost there, but just cannot lock it out. Wow, shocking. Really surprising. The guy with his kind of pressing power, you know, the American log press record holder, 
Um, great on most overhead implements to see him struggle with this stuff. I would expect an easy press on that. Yeah. Well, it's a little different too right. because it's it's all in here, not. Yeah, you know, it's not out. Yeah, and it, looks like, it just looks like the way that you, you have to balance it, you don't have an opportunity to engage any lower body here. No, it, 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 you know, it takes the push press out of it because if you do try to do push press, it's going to come out of your hands. Typically falls forward, but again, with a guy like Bobby, who has really strong strength. I don't think he'd be able to just strict press it. And there he goes. That counts for Bobby Thompson. Good. Okay, keep, now he's move going. on up. He's only got 45 seconds to go, though, so he's got to kind of move quick here through these next two if he wants to get one rep on that stone to shoulder. So he needs to get this over as efficiently, quickly as possible, and then just get the other stone off the ground. And yep. then he can, he can keep working with it. There he goes. Come on, finish it up. That grip is starting to go, though. Yep. He's not one of the taller athletes, either. No. Thompson's got to hurry. Ten seconds remaining. It's just not going to happen for the American Nightmare. It really is surprising how much this medley is tearing guys up. Yeah. Well, he did get a press, so it kind of puts him in that next little, you know, at least he got that point. It does so set far, yeah. the stage for these other guys, though. I mean, I'm excited to see if anybody gets through those first two stones, what the crowd's reaction is going to be like. <laughs> They're going to go nuts. <laughs> it's going to be great and to Especially hear. if you shoulder it. Ugh. We only have four men left, but that was a great fight for Bobby Thompson. I mean, the fact that you expend that much energy and then are able to actually then get it. That's why he's so fired up, but this was the stopping point for Bobby Thompson. So he and Alexei Novikov are the only two men to press the stone, and we have yet to see anyone get past that portion of the event. We have four men remaining, Mateusz Kieliszkowski, Tom Stoltman, Arthur Bjornsson, and Mitchell Hooper. Well, I guess also the uh, the axle might have taken a little bit out of each of the athletes. Yeah. I mean, everything has, right? I mean, it's, it's been a tough competition up to this point, so. Well, this is everything when you, you know, Stones, a lot of grip. They already, they did a grip event today. Well, they, they started with a, you know, a maximum effort yesterday with the deadlift. Yeah, you know, deadlift so. into the frame carry, yeah. into the Denny Stones carry, you know, into the axle press. It's just a beatdown of a competition. Yeah, and especially the posterior. The posterior is taking a big beating, yeah. you know. And now here comes the Polish side, and you know if he can get to that last stone. It's, it's going to cause some problems. He's, it's going to show. Yeah. It's just getting there right now. That seems to be the big, the biggest problem. He's I love the confidence. Up. I love the confidence. Walking yeah, out, yeah, the he's, first he's thing just he does that one. is yeah. go to that final stone because he knows he's going to get there. Uh, he's very familiar with that stone. That's his baby. <laughs> yeah. I mean, with the amount of points left on the table right now, mm -hmm. yeah. nobody's safe in this top four. No. No. You could have something really surprising happen where somebody just rockets down the uh, uh, the point standings with just a big mistake. All right, Mateus, you see it. Come on. See the show. There we go. <laughs> oh, motion. Oh. Okay. We're moving. I love that. Let's go. That's awesome. I'll just I'll just take it in one motion over my head. It's great. Stone snatch. There you go. Just a face of determination. Oh, one motion oh, there. Oh, oh, right. Now Mateusz Kieliszkowski is going to have yeah. two minutes to go after this 410 pound. Here we go. 186 kilo stone. There we go. Let's see. A lot pretty easy. Adjusting it. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Wow. He is so the master. Good. One good rep so far for Kieliszkowski. He's under and a here minute. Here we go. He's under a minute. He's got a minute and a half to go. This is a statement. After watching most of that field go and fail through that first rep, to come out here and just one motion the first with a strict press, one motion that second stone over the bar, and now an easy one rep 
with still almost a, over a minute left on the clock. He's done this before on this stone, you know. We've had this, you know, the first year was here. We, we all struggled with it. He came out and just dominated. He had four lifts with it. Yeah. So methodical. Wow. So strong. Yes. Second rep counts for Kalaszkowski. Wow. Remember, he is tied with Tom Stoltman. He's in got a minute now for that final spot on the podium. Here we go. Here we go. This will go a long, long way. You know, in the back, Tom right now is starting to sweat a little bit. Yeah. Oh, got to. Want to stay on that podium. He has to come out and do something big. Mateusz hoping to get at least one more rep here. 30 seconds remain for the Polish Titan. Well, he's not disappointed so far, that's for sure. No, this is great. Great final event for Mateusz. Let's see it. Come on, make it happen. This looks like it'll be his final attempt. Taking a look at the clock, he's good. Yep, it's off the ground. Crowd is on their feet. Up. It's going. Come on. There you go. Turn it. Nice. Oh, and Kowalski has it. Three good reps. And that 410. Wow. A little extra for the crowd. Nice. Yeah. Now the pressure is on Tom Stolman. Wow. He has nice. never failed with that stone. Every All time he stepped on up their to feet. it, he put it on the shoulder. That is amazing. You know, for a guy that doesn't show that much emotion when yeah. he's out on that competition floor, you know he feels good about what he just did. Absolutely. What a performance. How did it feel getting that last rep with the crowd cheering? <laughs> oh, it was heavy. <laughs> congratulations. Thank that you. was fantastic. Thank you. Really, congratulations. Fantastic. Well, you did some amazing things. But when you get this guy coming up, you got to feel good. Mateusz Kalishkowski. Nice. Awesome. awesome. That's got to make his weekend, too. How about that? Wow. Does everything he needs to do to put himself inside the top three. And after you watch this, it was like, OK. <laughs> OK. How many were we going to get on that final stone? Because that just looked like a, wow. a minor inconvenience. It's yes. just silly. A little warm up before he got there. He has never failed with this stone. Every time he stepped up to it in competition, he's put it to his shoulder. Amazing effort. And once it's it's over his belt, it's, the turn is it's so easy for him. The way yeah. he just turns and rotates it, like this right here. He pulls it up, pushes it over his head. There. And one from and the crowd. Flex. Yeah. I love that. Yes. You paid for a ticket. Let me help you. My stone. I'm taking it back to pole. <laughs> there we go. That is amazing. Three men remain. Tom Stoltman is up next. And again, he came in tied with Kieliszkowski with 29 and a half points. So he needs three to get to the shoulder to tie for third place. I mean, that is a tall order coming out onto this floor right now after what wow. I just saw. This, and this, is, this is very different than using an Atlas stone, really. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Now, Tom's known for his, his strength in stones, you know, but typically Atlas stones. You know, now he has done these first two before. He's you know, familiar with these, not necessarily the press, but he's, he's, he's touched these stones before. But that third stone's going to be the challenge. Yep. Uh, this is right his third appearance at the Arnold Strongman Classic. His best finish coming into this was sixth place last year. So he has a really good chance of besting that here in 2024. He's got to get past this press, though. You know, his yeah, we know his log press is great. We'll see how he does on the stone. Oh, easy. That's not easy. a problem for Tom Stoltman. Easy. easy. This should be an easy stone for him, too. All right, see it, Tom. Come on, Tom. Uh, just rolled. No Gotta big deal. Gotta find that sweet yeah, spot. Just a little roll on it. Good job. 365 pound, 165 kilo stone is up and over. And now he's going to try and track down Mateusz Kieliszkowski's mark of six reps. He's got to get four to tie here. Come on now. Let's go, Tom. Let's see it. At just under two minutes. He doesn't have great. He doesn't have a great track record with this stone, though. 
No. When we had it a few years ago. I don't believe oh, Heatherstone has, has it. I forgot. Yeah, he, he, has he hasn't. He hasn't, he hasn't had a. He hasn't had a rep with this. I, I think that's yeah. five reps for Kilos Koski. Just want to clarify that, as you can see on the scoreboard, five reps for Mateo. So Stolman's going to need to get three here. Now he's got 90 seconds left. The toughest part about this stone is finding that spot of where to hold on to it, where to grab it, and you have to be consistent every time when you go back down to grip that stone. And it wants to roll. And if you can't find it when you first get it, it don't know if you will. Well, right. he's calling it. He's going to call it. Wow. But Tom Solman will leave with two good reps. Mateusz Kieliszkowski now more or less assured a spot on the podium. Well, we talked about that uh, before the show today, you know, or at the beginning of the show. What do we think is going to, how's it going to play out? You know, Mateus gets a chance to finish the competition with his stone. <laughs> yeah. Hafthor Bjornsson will now be the next man out. Another amazing stone lifter trying to put some pressure on Mitchell Hooper, who does not have experience on these stones. Yep. Yes. But somehow Mitchell's always just good at so stuff. So consistent, yeah. It's just amazing. He's good at figuring stuff out. Oh. It reminds me of uh, Marius Pujanowski, how, you, how yeah. he used to compete. Marius was one of those athletes that he could look at an implement and just know what to do to make it work for him. And, and Mitchell is, is very similar to that in how he attacks these events, yeah. how he's able to make the implements work with his body type and work towards his strengths. And it obviously is showing this weekend. And another great strategist in that way was Magnus for Magnuson. He yeah. was... He would just figure stuff out and and do it in such a way that he'd have to actually make rules about yeah. what you know the Magnus rules. Like you can't do that. Well, Hathor Bjornsson is making his return here for the tenth time at the Arnold Strongman Classic. He won this competition three straight years from 2018 to 2020, and he has 13 career event wins. And you look at this guy's resume, and, and you know Jerry, we were talking yesterday. Like his best days still might be ahead of him. Oh, absolutely. I mean, he's still only, what, 34 years old. So he's really going to come into some of his best years strength-wise. You know, so the more he sticks with it, you know, on this comeback, it's going to get better and better, especially when that overhead finally comes back. Then he's really going to be dangerous. Right. And his, he's got his man muscles in his 30s, right? Right. <laughs> I mean, my, my best lift in the late 30s. Well, two men remain, Hathor Bjornsson, who sits in second place overall with 38 points, and Mitchell Hooper, who has won three straight events. You know, even for Hathor, being in second place at this point in the competition still has to feel pretty good for him, considering yeah. it's his yeah. first competition since 2020. Mitchell Hooper's been on a hot streak ever since he really entered the sport. So to be hanging with him in your first contest back, that's got to feel really good. Absolutely. And again, you know, just less than a year ago, he had that, that big peck tear that everybody knows about. And, you know, it's, he's just continued to come through it. Hathor has yet to finish lower than fourth in an event, two seconds, and then he also has a first place in that elephant bar deadlift. And if you missed that, he only took two lifts. And his second lift was 1,006 pounds. And, and we asked him when he came up, could you have broken your record? He said, yes, but I want to be smart for the, for the rest of the competition. That was just one thing to do. Yeah, we talked about yesterday, even breaking the record wasn't going wasn't to get him any more points right. on the leaderboard. No. The mountain against the stones. Go. See an easy press. Come on, Haptor. He needs a little leg drive here. Oh. 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 Kind of like seeing what we saw to Martins. Yeah. Okay, having, come on now. Having the stone on your chest is a little bit different than a log or an actual, mm -hmm. right? The center of mass is directly over your chest. It's disorienting looking up into the rafters here right. at the Expo Center. So trying to find that balance point is really difficult. Hafthor asking for, him, for some help from the crowd here. I think also, too, sometimes competition conditioning is bigger than you think yeah. from show to show. And I, you know, depending on how his training is, if he hasn't been putting together this many events in two days or a day, 
kind of start conditioning himself that comes into play. I don't think it's like going to happen. Press is going to go. The yeah. athlete wow. like he's out of gas here. Yeah, that press shaking his head. A minute left. Boy, this really shakes up points. Well, it means that Mitch Hooper just has to come out and get a press. Yeah. It helps out Mateus. Yeah. That's true. Well, Killers Koski had 29 and a half points. He was eight and a half back of Hafthor for second. But Hafthor zeroes here. It's going to get Mateus in yeah. second place. Yeah. Mateus takes second. Yeah. He's, he needs this press. Come on now. Just do it. And Tom Solman right now sitting in second place. Still alive. Yeah. 30 seconds. I mean, this he doesn't get this press. There's a chance he could slide off the podium. Yep. Come on, half door. Make it happen. Oh! oh, oh just cannot right get there. There. Close. Half door Bjornsson not wow. able to get a rep. Surprising. Shaking up the podium, no shaking kidding. up the standings. And now yeah. things get really interesting as far as spots two and three are concerned. Mitch Hooper, if he gets a press, he should be fine here. Yeah. Get a four-point lead on half four coming in to this final event. If my math is correct, he might not even need to get a press. Yeah. The 12 and a half point lead. Yeah, because nobody else would catch him. Only 11 competitors total, 11 He's points up for grabs. More yeah. or less clinched. Yeah. Yeah, he, he technically really has to come out. In Mitch Hooper fashion, I can't imagine him I still was, not wanting to I put was on gonna a show. Say, I don't think yeah, he would I, want I, it. I was going to see him but stopping at one, but. Yeah. yeah. It uh, obviously would probably be the smart thing to do, especially if he's doing UK in two weeks, but. Having Arnold front row and center, though, is tough to, to yeah, get out of do one right. row. But none of us do the smart things in, in the moment. Well, the other, <laughs> yeah, the other thing would be that, you know, he's never seen this stone. Does he need that experience? Should, you know, does he want to just give that give that big stone a run? You, Rob, you mentioned, you know, how he just burst onto the scene. And look what he's done in such a short time. 13 straight podium appearances in all the competitions he's won. He's the defending champion here. And we talked about last year. When he won the first championship, he didn't win a single event. This year, he's got the consistency, and now he's got the home runs to go to boot. He has three straight event wins here. Yeah, I mean, this guy, one of the, this guy's essentially his first international competition was World's Strongest Man in 2022, and he took eighth place. Ever since then, he has not been off the podium in a competition. I mean, just absolutely amazing to come up onto this level. I mean. I've been doing this sport for 15 years, and I'm jealous of that resume. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't seem like it's possible. You know what I mean? Yeah. Normally, you pay your dues when you're coming through. Not to say he's not done the work, but just how astounding what to he's done. To be this good this fast, is, it's impressive. And he's, you know, he's a great athlete. He's a great guy. <laughs> Working up the crowd a little bit. Hear the moose Whoa. chant coming from the crowd here. This is more or less a victory lap for Mitch Hooper. I'm selfish. I really hope. I hope he goes for the third stone. It would be a great <laughs> show. It would. I, I just like okay. Well, that will count. Well, there, there you go. And he jogs. Nice We're going jog over to the second stone now. So Mitch Hooper decided to put on a show for the crowd. 365 pounds. That's thank you. Over. Thank you. Please do it. Now let's see. Please do it. Yes. All right, let's see it. Icing on the cake. Oh, is he getting Arnold up there? <laughs> Come on, Arnold. Cheer me on. He wants to give Arnold a front row view. He just said, Arnold, stay here if you don't want to get hurt. <laughs> <laughs> oh. People paid for a ticket. Well, now he has to do it. Yeah. You better get one if you're going to get if Arnold out of his chair. Out. After all, yeah, you Arnold better get one. Of, you got Arnold out of his chair, yeah. man. <laughs> no, no oh, not oh, going to oh, happen. Oh, oh. Oh. Hey, Moose, Moose, you don't need to apologize. You didn't get that final stone, but you know what you did? 
You win back to back. You're 2024 Arnold Strongman Champion. Great performance. Wow. Just amazing. Amazing. Someday your little girl's going to watch. I want you to look at the camera. Give her a little message right now. What's going through your head? Made me cry. Uh, first of all, uh, Ashley, I love you. Thank you for taking the bullet for a couple of days while I've been away. And uh, Peyton, I hope that you're more proud of who I am than what I do. Your champion, ladies and gentlemen, wow. the Moon. That whole preparation. You know, he's the third Canadian that can claim the uh, can claim the title of the world's strongest man. Yeah. You know, Louis Sear. And then, you know, so I think uh, it's, it's very special. Well, Mateo Kieliskasi is going to pick up the event win. And here are your unofficial results. Uh, Hooper, another top three finish as he and Stoltman both get two reps. Alexei Novikov and Bobby Thompson get one rep, and then everybody else failed to get a single rep. So Mitch Hooper, it was a victory lap for him, made an attempt at that last stone, but already had the championship for the second straight time uh, in his back pocket. And he talked about, we heard him yesterday when we started our coverage, talk about imposter syndrome. I mean, there was no more of that. None of that. No. <laughs> no, he, he proved all that. Last year wasn't a fluke. He's given you know, everybody a just complex. Luck. Kevin and dominated just us. consistently consistently great across every single event I mean it's amazing to see a guy this young come up so fast in the sport and just have no weaknesses it really is just amazing <laughs> on that carry taking a look at the crowd three straight wins that the timber carry the stone carry and then a pollen wheels and then he comes out and gets another top three finish here and it's you know, last year we said the same thing, really no weaknesses. But now you have no weaknesses, and now you're winning events against, as we said to start, probably the best field ever we've seen at this event. Absolutely. But, a, you know, a, a grueling competition, and he, he stayed strong through the whole event and deserves to be called the champion. Five World Strongest Man champions at this competition. Unbelievable. Multiple Arnold Strongman champions here. I think he just keeps. I think he just keeps coming. Yeah. I, I, I see him just continuing to do what he's doing now. I just keep getting better and better. The yeah. magic carpet ride continues. <laughs> now, if you're you're one of his competitors, like, I mean, how do you catch this guy? Like, what needs to happen for for people to close the gap here? Very well aware, Sean. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> you know, as a guy that looks at him, it really is trying to pick apart. You know, one, I'm going to study what he's doing. How is he doing everything so well? What is getting him to be so consistently good? Um, but also, I want to try to chip away as much as possible at all of his strengths. You know, in looking at a guy like myself, I'm a pretty good deadlifter. Mm -hmm. I, can, I do really well in moving events and overhead pressing events. Where can I push him a little bit to try to take some points away from him, maybe take him off, uh, off of his game a little bit? Because I think that's what really needs to happen is he doesn't get tripped up too often. You know, I right. think he has this confidence where he's able to just go into these events and really hit them so strong, and nobody really makes him fumble ever. Yeah. Um, so as an athlete where I can play the game a little bit, what can I do to cause him to trip up to maybe have him have a misstep that's going to open up a window for me to step in? All right, well, let's take a look at the final standings as the leaderboard definitely got shook up courtesy of that final event. Mitch Hooper wins for the second straight time. Mateusz Kieliskowski is going to wind up in second, and Tom Stoltman does enough, barely enough, to leapfrog Hathor Bjornsson for that final spot wow. on wow. the podium. Wow. Bobby Thompson is going to wind up in fifth followed by Novikov and Singleton and Martins Lietzis, eighth place overall. But congratulations to Mateusz Kieliskowski, who makes a late charge again to put himself on the podium. Tom Stoltman joining Mitchell Hooper on the podium here at the 2024 Arnold Strongman Classic. So final thoughts, start with you, Dr. Bill. What did you learn these past two days? Well, that it, I, what I really loved is that Natural Stones had such a great part of mm -hmm. this uh, championship and that they had, you know, it, it really fleshed things out on both days because I'm kind of partial to that. <laughs> but what I really saw was that 
everybody came to, to win. And mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the beautiful part of this, is that everybody came to win. There was nothing left on the floor. Yeah. Nothing. Everybody came and gave everything they had. We had some exceptional, uh, some exceptional performances. How much electricity can you oh. have th from today? That stone to shoulder uh, by Angelica. So it's just been fantastic. And Jerry, what's your biggest takeaway? Yeah, you know, some of the performances. I mean, so there's a standout. I mean, Mateus coming in and just crushing everyone mm -hmm. on that, you know. And then, like Angelica did with the women on the stone, you know, th those were impressive. Angelica did it on the, on the stone carry as well, you know. Those were huge performances that shocked everyone. Yeah. You know, we we saw Rebecca come out and was like, wow, that's a great carry. Yeah. And then Angelica just crushed it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, before we could even finish talking about that, Angelica was out there yeah. you know, marching up and down the floor. Yeah. And Rob, what will you remember most about this you experience? You know, I think for me what's exciting is how this sets up the rest of the 2024 Strongman yeah. calendar. I think a lot of people were looking at this show to see, okay, it's a return show for Martins. It's a return show for um, Hathor. What kind of shape are they in, and what is this going to make the rest of the 2024 Strongman calendar look like? Uh, I think it raised some eyebrows. I think it's <laughs> going to give some guys some false confidences going into the rest of the year because we know how good Martins and Hathor are, e though, even though they didn't have such a great performance this weekend. Um, but I am really excited to see how it's going to motivate them for the rest of their training. Again, we talked about we have the uh, Arnold UK in two weeks. World's Strongest Man shortly after that, and a great calendar year. So it's exciting to see how this is going to really set up the year for the strong, for the professional strongman scene. Yeah, really looking forward to seeing the rest of these competitions play out throughout the entire year. That is going to do it for us. Before we go, we want to make sure we thank the Arnold Fitness Festival. We want to thank the Arnold Strongman and Strongwoman Classics. And we want to thank Arnold Schwarzenegger for being such gracious hosts here. And remember, the Rogue Invitational. Heading overseas, going to Scotland. That is going to be an absolute <laughs> blast. So thank Fantastic. you so much, everyone, for joining us. For Dr. Bill, Jerry Pritchett, Rob Kearney, Kristen Rhodes, our entire crew here in Columbus, thank you so much for watching us. We hope you enjoyed our coverage of the 2024 Arnold Strongman and Arnold Strongwoman Classics. We've had five years of the Rogue Invitational. We started out in Columbus, Ohio at Rogue HQ. We did it virtually. And then we spent the last three years in Austin, Texas. So in 2024, we've decided to do it a little bit differently. And we're gonna come to Aberdeen, Scotland.